Hey gang, Spitta here, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Hunt for the Decepticons Voyager Class Highbrow. Now, Highbrow is the latest in the Hunt for the Decepticons line of the Voyager Class series, as I just said, and I have to say I am very impressed with this figure. But we're going to start out in robot mode, since that's the way the figure is packaged. He does come with two guns, which are can be attached to his side skirts here. Well, sometimes I just like to put the side skirts back, but... They are two uh, Vulcan cannons, and they're very nice, very nicely detailed for weapons. The only issue I have is they're only half detailed. So you have uh, this side here, and then you turn them around, and they're completely hollow. That just has to do with the way that the, that the um, weapons were made. They were made in a cast, so that's just the way they were. So each uh, hand can hold one of the weapons very easily, as you can see. And we'll bother with the other one. Uh, this figure is uh, in robot mode. Is this weird? Is this sky blue? Which I'll explain when we get him into vehicle mode. This nice tan, uh, black high or charcoal highlights, and it just looks like it. It's just a very nice looking figure. His head sculpt is actually very nice as well. It's as you can see, very much an aviator head sculpt, and it has really nice light piping in the back, which you can see right there. I really, really dig the look of this figure. It's very, very Autobot to me. So, in this mode, he has a attack gimmick. You take the fist and rotate that into the forearm, then take the entire forearm and fold it forward, and then you have his attack gimmick. Push down on the engine and the, and the blades spin. So that's his attack gimmick. Robot mode is very is nicely posable. Uh, arms have full 360 degree rotation. They've got in and out movement. The elbows are standard pivot joint. Well, fists don't move though, unfortunately. Legs, good amount of articulation. Unfortunately, some of the transformation bits do get in the way. And then he's got some side articulation here. And then his feet are very articulated. I mean, really articulated. You get a lot of movement here, and you can get off some very nice poses with this guy. My chief complaint of this mode is his arms. This has to do with the transformation. I realize that. But having the... If you look at the figure, the arm is not straight. It goes down. If you follow the natural progression of a hand, it should be over right where the tip of the Vulcan gun is. that That's where the fish should be, is right about here. It's off to the side, and that really, really just throws my eye off. That's just a nitpick on me. The other thing I have an issue with is his hip joints. These His hip does ask, blah, blah. His hip does split apart. And these ratchet joints that are his legs are actually some of the tightest joints I've ever seen and when you try to move them it pulls the figure in half. Oh well, I would rather have slightly tight joints than slightly loose joints. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the transformation here. This is actually a pretty complex transformation but it's fun. I had a lot of fun transforming him the first time. We're going to come around here to the back and take the canopy and rotate it up. When we do that, we'll take these um, kibble bits and actually just get them lined up so that they close around the canopy like that. And we'll just leave it pointing up like that. Next thing we're going to do is take his shoulder blades, or shoulder pads, and fold them out like that, or fold them so that they're kind of perpendicular to his, the rest of him and then fold the entire shoulder up. And as you can see, his face is now covered by his shoulder pads. And you can see where we're starting to go with this. Fold the fists down into the engine blocks and come down to his uh, lower torso. Flip out this landing gear and then grab the rest of the figure down here and pull it apart. And swing the figure around and at this point you can lower the canopy section into place. So then we take the entire um, leg section, slide it up into place so it, it kind of snaps into place, 
kind of not really. You just have to kind of fiddle with it until everything gets lined up and everything slides in where it should. It's a little bit tricky, but it eventually will go in correctly. You want actually the engine part, this tab right here, to be above the, knee, the leg. That's important, and we'll get into that in a second. So we'll just kind of leave it like that. And we'll come down to the legs. Now the first thing we're actually going to do is take this, this part right here and detach it, swing it up, and then just get everything mushed together so that it all snaps into place. And there we go. We've got it uh, closed up over there. Now for the last part of the transformation, we're going to take the rear part of the feet and fold them down like this. And we'll fold them completely back like that so that they're pointing straight down from what would be the robot mode. Then we'll take that and turn them so that the blue parts are all facing down. And then we'll turn these such that they're, once again, they're flat. And to do that, you actually have to take what the feet and fold the feet out to be the rear tail wing, or the real rear wings. And these parts connect. And then what these parts that we were folding out connect together. And then we can come in here and turn the toes into the rear tail wings. And finally, all we have to do is fold, is unfold the rotors so that there are four, so that there are four bladed rotor as opposed to a two. And then last but not least, put the guns on the figure. And here we have a very, very nice version of the P-38 Lightning. And I have to say that I absolutely adore this vehicle mode. This is my one of my all-time favorite vehicle modes. The reason is it just looks fantastic. I love World War II. I love weird planes from World War II. That's just something I really, really enjoy. And this guy, this guy just is so cool looking. Now, for those of you who are plane fans, this is obvious. This is supposed to be an homage, an homage to the uh, P-38 Lightning. The big difference between the P-38 Lightning is, and this is the this section, this middle section right here where the canopy is, is actually kind of take the whole section and turn it around 180 degrees because the canopy should be up here past the past the propellers. I think, yeah, if you, it, just Google image it. But, you know what, I don't really care. Now, what I, so, something I wanted to talk about uh, also was underneath the vehicle is powder blue. Now, why is that? Well, back in World War II, they started to paint the underside of planes sky blue. So if you were looking up from the ground, you wouldn't see a plane, it would just... It would camouflage in. Unfortunately, this figure does kind of fail that with the exhaust pipes here and the robot kibble here and all this robot kibble here and, you know, the bombs. But, oh well. So, should you buy this figure? If you like interesting Transformers and you like World War II planes, definitely pick this up. If you're looking for a good Voyager figure, pick this up. If you're looking for a posable Voyager figure that goes on your shelf, pick this up. You know what? There are some minor issues with this figure. The transformation is a little bit convoluted. The robot mode sometimes doesn't hold together well. And I'll be honest, this figure might not be for everybody, but I really, really enjoy this figure. I really think this guy is great, and I really think it belongs into your, in your collection. Once again, this is Spada reviewing Transformers Hunt for the Decepticons Voyager Class Highbrow, and I give him two thumbs up. Well, there we go. Thumbs up.